So we're here at Grove at Williams. Behind me is Wind Tunnel 2. It's the second wind tunnel we've had at Williams. Our first wind tunnel 1 that came from our site in Didcot originally. It's a full-size wind tunnel, so it's capable of testing road and race cars up to full size, and it goes to speeds up to 180 miles an hour. So now we're standing underneath Tunnel 2. It's a closed return wind tunnel, which means it effectively runs in a big loop, so all the air is recycled. It's one of the biggest wind tunnels in Formula One. It was commissioned in 2002 and fully functional by 2004. And Mercedes then commissioned effectively a replica of this tunnel. So the two are sister tunnels with each other. My name's Callum McIver. I'm a senior wind tunnel methodology engineer. I set the tunnel up for the aerodynamicists' desires in terms of what testing they want to do. So if you deselect these last three, so I just wanted to test creating a new config based yeah. on that. Let's do it. Select all of these in the PIV. Yeah. My main day-to-day -day role is looking after the tunnel's PIV system, programming the wind tunnel sequences that control the sort of whole facility during the wind tunnel runs. So now we're actually inside the wind tunnel itself. The fan is about five and a half metres in diameter, and one of those shots was used for the F1 film. It has about three and a half thousand horsepower, to put it in car terms, and it can spin up to about 500 RPM, which in the working section will create test speeds of up to 180 miles an hour. So one of the big challenges with the footage for the film was actually filming inside here while the fan was spinning. So obviously, usually while the tunnel's running, there's nothing inside it other than the test model. So making sure that their camera equipment was secure was a really important deal. We're lucky at Williams to have one of the best wind tunnels on the grid. A few other teams have very similar tunnels. Some teams have smaller tunnels. When we upgraded from Tunnel 1 to Tunnel 2, we made the leap to a, a full-size wind tunnel. The FIA now have regulated that full-size testing is no longer possible. So if you're going to build a new wind tunnel from scratch, you might just build a model-size tunnel. Obviously now we test models of the car, so they're not a real car and there's differences between obviously a real race car and a 60% scaled model. Having a full-size capable wind tunnel back in 2003 was uh, a big deal and meant that we could test the actual products that we were then going to take onto the racetrack. I'm James Gill Busfield, I'm a senior wind tunnel engineer here at Williams. My day-to-day uh, -day job is to operate the facility uh, and conduct the aero test programme. Normally I'll be sat in the control room analysing the live data streams as it comes in, watching the model for any issues, reacting to things live, validating data before we commit to blowing the wind. Are you happy for me to lower the model? OK, model coming down. OK, pressing play. OK, data looks good. Should have images now, Kyle. PIV checks have passed. Are you happy with the images, Kyle? So we're now underneath the wind tunnel uh, while it's running. So as you can hear, it's very noisy. Uh, and this is the rolling road system. So it matches the airspeed. So it's currently running at 110 miles an hour. So at the minute, we've got our 2026 car upstairs on the road. Um, and that's been in development for quite some time. So we're looking forward to starting next year and seeing how we do. This is part of our robotic PIV system. These basically started out as welding robots. One has a laser on it, two have cameras, and we use them to take high-speed images of seeding particles within the airflow in the tunnel. From those high-speed images, we can derive the velocity of the airflow around the model in the wind tunnel. We have three robots here, and we have the same setup mirrored on the other side of the model. PIV is particle image velocimetry, and it involves taking high-speed photos of seeding particles in the airflow. Then there is an algorithm that calculates the velocity of each of those particles from one image to the next image. And from that, we can derive the airflow of the whole region of interest. This is a robot controller that's used to control each of these three robots, as well as the traverses that they can traverse up and down the tunnel on. We use this during setup of the PIV acquisition planes to manually move the cameras 
into a position that allows them to capture the area of interest. Once we have those positions, we save them within the uh, PIB control system and it's able to then recall those positions um, whilst we are running the tunnel. We do that with each of the robots, including the laser, and save that as a position, which is then able to be recalled by the PIB control system whilst the tunnel is running and to then capture the uh, PIV images that we then need to process. When they came to film the F1 movie here, I helped them with setting up specific sequences and they had that in the background whilst the dialogue between the main characters was going on within the control room. So this is now where the main fan is uh, within this structure here. And then the other side of us is where the model motion system is stored. So that's what controls the actual model on the working section. The models are very sophisticated systems. They have active suspension, active steering racks, so we can fine adjust the position and the attitudes of the model exactly the same way that the race car does on track to simulate how we would go around a normal track lap. Wind Tunnel 2 obviously is in an acoustic chamber to stop the noise from getting outside. When we sit in the control room, it's nice and controlled and everything looks very simple but actually it's an incredibly complicated ecosystem of lots of different systems all around the building. We have an array of air compressors that feed compressed air up into the road. We have a vacuum system that then sucks that air back down again. Full temperature controlled system in here. So this is actually a temperature controlled environment. And again, that's just to keep as many variables as constant as possible so that we know that when we do tests on different days or different months or different years, that the conditions are as accurate as possible and as similar to a previous test as possible. Normally I'd be at my desk in the control room, uh, but for the F1 movie I was based out here. Uh, we remote desked in. Very strange for me. Normally I like to see everything that's going on, but on the film day I was limited to my cameras just to monitor the facility and what the tunnel was doing at the time. Um, yeah, we had a person stationed in there posing as an extra, um, just so in the event that we did need to stop the tunnel in an emergency we could do. So the wind tunnel is one of the most secretive areas of the business. There's lots of employees that have never even been to where we're standing now. Uh, I think there's a slow move to change that um, and it's really nice to be able to open up the facility more around the, the company to give more people access and actually see what we do here. The models in the wind tunnel are often four, five or six months ahead of what you see on track. Obviously other teams will see your car when you turn up to a racetrack but they can't see your models or what that car will become in six months so that's why it's such a secretive environment here. We try our best to keep up with the latest trends in technology, um, so we're constantly evolving, um, making the models stronger, more robust, faster, ultimately to help our aerodynamic program become more efficient and therefore find more performance uh, for our cars on track.